All right, folks. So today we're going to take a look at this Retivis RT95 radio. It was sent to me free of charge in exchange for this video review from Retivis. So thank you, Retivis, for sending it. Now you can see here it's the model RT95, and there's some other information here should you be concerned about it. It is just your standard dual band ham radio for two meters and 70 centimeter operation. We'll have a full complete review on this uh, once we finish a series of tests videos. In this particular video, what we are going to test is the cleanliness of any emissions that come out of here. So what we're going to do is transmit on a particular frequency and we are going to see if there are harmonics and if those harmonics are within or within specification for the operation of this radio. So far I'm playing around with this radio, I do like it. So let's uh, take a look at what we're gonna use. And so the piece of test equipment that we're gonna use is one of my favorite pieces of test equipment is this Tiny SA. I'll have a link below where you can take a look and potentially purchase the uh, Retivus or the Tiny SA. Um, but we're gonna use this to measure our fundamental frequency, which is the frequency that we're transmitting on, as well as any harmonics. Now, when you use a radio like this, you want to make sure that you're transmitting in low power. Uh, this tiny SA can't receive very strong power. You'll burn up the tiny SA, which might be fun for you, but it's not going to be for me because then I'd have to get another one. Um, and then we are going to use this attenuator. And then you can see this is an SMA connector. Uh, it's 10 watts. It's a 40 dB attenuator. So that means this can handle up to 10 watts. So we're going to set the radio to 5. And uh, this will suppress our signal 40 dB, which should put it in range for measurement on the tiny SA. Now, it will attenuate all signals, our fundamental and harmonics, so we'll still be able to get an accurate measurement, or close to accurate. It's important to realize that this is not lab-grade equipment. This is hobbyist equipment. Um, and then this attenuator is good from DC, which is uh, 0 all the way up to 3 gigahertz. And then I just connect it in line with this jumper. Let me go ahead and get this connected now, and then we'll fire up the radio and we'll do our test. Okay, before we start doing any testing, I wanted to show you, we have our radio connected to power, so you can see that the microphone, uh, the hand mic is lit up. And then we have our antenna connection coming into an adapter that takes us down to BNC and then goes through this coaxial cable, I believe it's RG16. And that comes into our attenuator and then into the low port on the tiny SA. Okay, so what I wanted to quickly review is the emission standards. I'll include a link to this below so you can review it on your own. I'm not giving anybody any expert opinions or legal advice, so take it for what it is. You need to make decisions based off of your testing on your equipment if your radio meets the emission standards. So when you take a look at this, there's some language up here. No amateur uh, station shall occupy more bandwidth than necessary for the information rate and emission type being transmitted in accordance with good amateur practice. Emissions resulting from uh, modulation must be confined to a band or segment available to the control operator. Emissions outside the necessary bandwidth must not cause splatter or key click interference to operations. And you can go through this and you can see different things. When we take a look at D, um, this is talking about frequencies below 30 megahertz, and that is not us. Uh, when we come down here for part E or section E or whatever you want to say, this is what we're concerned about. The mean power of any spurious emission from a station transmitter or external RF power amplifier transmitting on a frequency between 30 and 225 megahertz. So when we transmit on the two meter band, um, uh, today we're gonna to transmit on 146.52, that is within that range. And what it's saying is, is that the, um, you must be at least 60 dB below the mean power of the fundamental. Now for a transmitter having a mean power of 25 watts or less, this is our clause, our radio here is 25 watt radio. The mean power of any spurious emission supplied to the antenna transmission line must not exceed 25 microwatts and uh, must be at least 40 dB below the mean power of the fundamental, uh, but not be reduced below a power of 10 microwatts. A transmitter built before April 15, 1997 or first marketed before January 1, 1978 is exempt from this requirement. 
our radio <laughs> was manufactured after that, so we're not exempt. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to test to see if we are 40 dB below the mean power of the fundamental emission. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so here we are. We have our radio set to 14652, and I want to ensure that my radio is set to a lower power level. And the reason I'm doing that is because, as I mentioned, I did not want to damage or hurt the tiny SA. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a long press of the function key. And that takes me into a menu. I'll go down to... This button feels like it's backwards. Maybe it's just me, but it feels like it's backwards. So let me go into the channel menu. And then I can see option number three, power is already set to low. So I'm good there. So now we are back to our main screen. Let me go ahead and focus out and focus on the tiny SA because that's where all the action is going to happen. Okay, so here we are with the tiny SA. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to select a level. And then I'm going to pick attenuate and I'm going to switch to manual attenuation. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put 20 in here. Okay, and the tiny SA is now adjusting. The next thing I want to do is I want to come in here and then I'm going to go back and then I'm going to go back to the root or the top menu and I'm going to go to measure. Then I'm going to pick harmonic. Okay, now it's going to ask me for the frequency of the fundamental. And we know that's going to be 146.520. Megahertz. Okay, now that is set. What I want to do now is I'm going to take the microphone and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to key up. Now once I'm keying up, we have two different markers here and it's going to take a while to get a full reading on those markers. The reason being is that the sweep rate of the tiny SA needs to catch up. There's a lot of data points here and it looks like we've caught up. So what it's showing uh, in the upper left-hand corner is that marker number one is at 146.54. And that could just be a placement thing. It's not a reason to worry or panic. And then I can take a look at marker number two, and I can see that marker number two is 146.53 megahertz away from our primary. So this is the first harmonic. And what you can see there is that first harmonic is negative 51, uh, now it's saying 52, but around negative 51 dB, um, and that's perfect. That's right where we want to be. There's a limitation here with the tiny SA because each fundamental is 146.52 uh, megahertz away. I can only go up to 350 megahertz on the low input. But taking a look at this, I feel reasonably comfortable that the Retivus RT95 is clean. So what I want to do is I want to say thanks to Retivus for sending this to me for my consideration. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.